Welcome to the Mystery of Life. I'm Jo. And I'm Johnny. And today we're asking, would you live in Helltown? It's not really an option, is it? Well, it's not really called Helltown. <laughs> no. Um, it actually refers to Boston, but I thought that would make a confusing title since I think most people jump to Boston, the city, like Boston, Massachusetts. But it's not that. It's actually in Ohio. It's a small town. And this one was actually your idea. It was. And on the face of it, it sounds really creepy and mysterious, but I've, I've researched and it turns out there's a lot of confusion and a lot of controversy about this town. So let's see what we can sort out. Yeah, I didn't think it would result in anything spooky in the end, I, but I thought it would be interesting to talk about because I think it's quite a cool subject. Yeah, so a bit of history, which was actually more difficult to find than I expected because when you Google it, Google just wants you to see all the spooky stuff. But I actually wanted like actual history about the town. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was inspired by a... a, a a mockumentary that's on um, Disney Plus, uh, Discovery Plus. It's the documentary that's been making the rounds and it is causing quite a lot of confusion. I think because of the way they've framed it, because at first you think it's an actual, everything in it is a documentary. Yeah. But it's not. So they've made up a lot of what's in there to tell the story. But I think yeah, that's going to lead to a lot of internet confusion, I think. Yeah, it did. This was a difficult episode to research because... It, there was so many like, is this real? Is this not? And so I think I've gotten to the bottom of it. Let's let's find out. <laughs> now, it is a very old town. It was inhabited by Native American tribes in the 1700s, and it did have quite a bloody history. There was infighting within the tribes in the area. And by the early 1800s, there was fighting with colonials. So, you know, I guess that's true for most, a lot of history, but... Yeah, for America, yeah. That's pretty much how it went everywhere. There are, there are quite a lot of Native American burial sites in the area. Now, these are not always marked, but I wanted to talk about the importance of these because I don't think, you know, the, like the ground is sacred to them. And I don't know too much about it, but it means something to them. And it annoys me. It's the same as the whole ancient Egypt thing. Even if you don't believe in it, that ground is important to somebody. Just, just don't mess with it. Just stop messing with stuff. Like, we, this is, to me, I wouldn't live there just because, like, it's a bit spooky, isn't it? Living on a, like, they, that, that meant something to someone. Yeah, I'm not overly sentimental myself, but considering the atrocities that we committed to these people, I say we because it was the British, let's be real. Well. Well, you can't say well, it was. We yeah, went over there yeah. and we, we decimated their culture and lifestyle. Well, then you won't be surprised to learn that in 1806, it was resettled by European settlers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a nice way of saying Brits. Yeah. <laughs> and resettled is a nice way of saying we took it. Yeah. yeah. It's not resettled at all. Uh, well, it was a very attractive area. I also, also, I also really dislike when we say we dis the, the word discovered America. It was already discovered, mate. Yeah, was the first people, people to discover it were living there. <laughs> you didn't discover shit. It was an attractive area with good farmland and a good opportunity to build businesses, which they did. In the 1820s, the Ohio and I Erie Canal, I couldn't figure out exactly how you say that, was built and Boston became an important stop along that route. And for more than 160 years, there was nothing really remarkable to say. People lived, worked, generations stayed, business and histories were built. Pretty standard American town story. Oh, and then we come to 1974, when the government, supposedly, decided they wanted the land for a park. Yes, a park. Apparently, America is panicked by the amount of forests, forests that are being lost. Rightly so. I mean, I'm not against, well, the, I'm not against building a national park. Mm, where there's already a town? Was there nowhere else that you could... Well, maybe now these town folks know exactly how the Native Americans felt, don't they? <laughs> I've so got no sympathy. President Ford signed off on this and they held a town meeting. Townspeople were told that basically you've got to sell your house and leave. And they would actually get like proper bargain basement prices. Like it was barely enough to buy a replacement home somewhere else. Most of the people felt they had no choice. They did as they were told and they were left. That was their own fault. But They had a choice. They yeah, well, they didn't really... So apparently a lot of them were, weren't really told why. And so there was all this anger. And sometimes the answers would be like given a bit and they'd say, oh, we want it for this or we want it for that. And the people that were left got like pretty rioty, really. Well, apparently in America you can do this. It's called eminent domain where the state can force you to leave your home, but they have to give you just compensation which no one here felt they really received. And by that, they mean not necessarily just what your house is worth. You've also got to consider the fact of the uprooting. You know, it's got to be comp comp proper compensation for what they're asking you to do. Mm. Now, this exists all over the world, including in the UK. I think we actually call it compulsory acquisition. 
Yeah, uh, but there, I think there it's are really circumstances, only used. but you can fight it. That, like, you can be the guy that's in front of a bulldozer not leaving his house. Yeah, I mean, you, it's really only used when it has to be, especially now. I mean, back in the day, maybe it was used a bit more, but it's it's not common now. And now, it, a park, I don't think, would really be a good enough reason. I think it would be like, look, we absolutely have to build this road here because there's literally nowhere else for it to go type thing. It is, it's a pretty lame reason yeah. to like uproot that many people. Well, some people stood firm. So... The government ordered the army, apparently, to evacuate the town and houses were sealed, burned and or demolished. Now, this is where the first sort of lot of controversy comes in because a lot of people say the army would not have been allowed to handle such a thing. Yes, they are. But yeah, well, there's a lot of confusion over this, which I mean, I'll speak about confusion in general at the end. But even if it wasn't the army, there was a law enforcement body on behalf of the National Park Service. So someone with authority, whether it's the police Rangers, I don't know, like a group of people with authority came in and literally remo- forcibly started removing people from this town. It's only the, I think the CIA are the only people that aren't allowed to operate on American soil. And that doesn't stop them. Like the military, we use military on military for things all the time. Yeah, in England, I was a when bit our surprised. firemen str- uh, were on strike, we used military firemen. They get used when there's riots that we call in the military. The military well, that makes sense when there's riots. Yeah, but it, you, this is Ameri- we, we were getting a bit rioty. This fair. is America. Don't forget these people are allowed to own guns in their home. Would you want to like turf them out or would you rather have the army do it? But either way, army or otherwise, and I was surprised really that people doubted the army so much. I thought they'd just be like, yep, come in and sort them out. But, but no, whatever. There's an authoritative body forcing people to leave their homes. Now, some residents remained firm on the issue and actually took the government to court. They won and the judge ordered this to uh, stop the forcing of sales and basically said, do, you know, do you want some of your homes back? But by then, most of them had already been destroyed or partially destroyed or burned or like it, there wasn't really a town left. So a lot of people were like, well, no, I, don't, I can't come back now. It makes you wonder if, if how they got permission in the first place, if it was just overturned like that. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And, and the fact that they got it done so quickly, like they, like they said no. And then the fact that they were like, oh, do you want your houses back? We'll just give them back. Rather than trying to be like, okay, we'll pause, but we're still going to fight you because we want this land. Yeah, it's like childish, isn't it? It's like when you lick the top of a, butt, like, a food and go, do you want it back? Yeah. So it's bizarre, but most people, like, it was too late for them to come back and it pretty much became a ghost town because they couldn't go ahead with this park thing. There were still a few people about. Eventually they left because there was nothing in this town anymore. And it just sort of got forgotten about almost. Or, you know, there was like, yeah. So it became a bit of a ghost town. And this is where the rumours started. Yes. Yeah, so from what I could tell, it, the rumours were all about why they did it. Uh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. It's the things that happen there now. Now, why they did it does come up. I and it's whether they were or not it's related to, to the, all of these things. Yeah, I thought they were supposed to have done it because they like, there was... One of the rumours was that there was a chemical leak nearby and people were mutating. And Yes, that is one of the options. Should we start there then? I wasn't Why going not? To, I mean, what a great uh... place to start. <laughs> the oversimplification of how genetics work. Oh. So yes, it, there was the conspiracy, I guess, that it could have been that there was an underground secret government testing facility. Now, first of all, why would you put it under a village or a town that already existed for so long when there was plenty of room around it? Yeah, I mean, this town is not is not in this like suburban sprawl where there's one town, two towns, three towns right in a clump. If they went ten minutes up the road, they would have found somewhere without any signs of life whatsoever where they could come and go as they pleased. So I'm not sure why you would build under this town unless you were experimenting on the people above it. Yeah, so the town was tiny by t- any standards, really. I've spent some time on Google Maps looking <laughs> looking at this town recently, and it was there actually was a couple of towns very very close by. But surrounding them, it's just miles and miles and miles of forest land. Like, at the very least, surely it would have made it easier to find to put it right underneath the town. So there's yeah, going to be a the reason. The only reason would be if you needed access to that town for whatever reason. And that reason may have been genetic mutation. Mm, probably not. Did they want everyone out of that town? Or did they need everyone out of that town? Because they had created some sort of animal slash human by mistake. You can't make these things like everyone like, seems to think that you can smash two things together and out comes this mix of the two. <laughs> I know we do that with dogs, but that is very much to do with dogs. You can't just like, you can't take too many species and just slam them together. They need to have a very common thread of DNA that, like, that you can 
combine them with. They're not, and not everything's compatible. Otherwise you go out and have sex with a cat and make a human cat. Oh, that's true. I hadn't really thought of that. It's just not compatible. It just wouldn't work. Well, some reported that they were successful in making a half human, half animal creatures and that one or more had escaped and that they still roam the area today. Now, I was unable to find any like, I use the word evidence lightly here because I wasn't really expecting like a written report from the FBI, but I couldn't really find any theories even as to what half animal it was. So. Yeah, it could have been like half human, half koala, which would just be adorable. (laughs) I don't know why you'd start with something vicious first, like when you're practicing. Well, speaking of vicious, there's also the peninsula python. Like just a big ass python. Did they make a giant snake? I no, I think any signs of large pythons is because someone's bought a python and let it loose. No, apparently it was like large python. Um and I did wonder like, has it just come from this facility or or has it just grown like abnormally large? To what so end though? Why? People claim it ate their chickens and small dogs and left marks like a big tire that had rolled across their yard. And apparently this python like travelled because some of the other towns in the right. area also okay. reported yeah. it. Yeah, this is this is just a normal python. Peninsula, by the way, is the next town. This is just a normal python. Uh, a normal a normal large python could eat all of those things you just listed. I know. And let's be honest, if you see a large python, you're probably going to exaggerate in your mm. mind. You're going to be scared of that motherfucker. When you see a a large python, you realise how large it bloody is and how scary and mythical and Jurassic it is. Well, in said mockumentary that you mentioned, it actually came out in 2017. They, as I say, it did mix a lot of facts and fi- fact and fiction and I think that leads to a lot of what, what we talk about here today. I mean, imagine if I discussed all of this as like it was absolute fact. I mean, I haven't even told you the half of it yet. <laughs> but even just the bit I've spoke about so far... If I talk to you like it was fact, I can get, I can see why people got confused. And they don't, it's not like they make it extremely obvious. No, they don't. No, there's a tiny disclaimer at the end that basically says this might not all be true. There's one at the beginning as well that says it's a mix of... No one reads them. You don't expect as much of it to be made up. Like, I knew that the footage probably wouldn't be real, but I at least expected the, the story of the kids going there to be real. But that was made up as well. It's like that OJ thing they did. They made that very clear that this is a fit, this is like a dramatised version. So I knew that like, that you know, some of the people's feelings might not be the same in that. But like the underpinning story was what happened. Yeah, but they've added to the underpinning yeah, story. Yeah, this really is just, is they've what... completely made stuff up. So one of those points was that they reported a girl who had been attacked by a creature. And there's no evidence that this attack ever existed, like at all. Like people and myself have looked into it for some time. Uh, but others put it down to a Wendigo. Ah, the Wendigo. Mm. Now, rumours of mutated and like folklore animals such as the Wendigo existed long before this documentary. So, you know, fine. But maybe, I suppose, is it possible that they like were evacuating the town because there was a Wendigo? I I mean... To be clear, we'll cover Wendigos another time, but basically they're mythical cannibalistic forest dwelling creatures, possibly humanoid, possibly an evil spirit. Make of that what you will. Uh, yeah, the Wendigo is supposed to feed off of you, isn't it? And yeah, I know the Wendigo. Um, but- yeah, and in the documentary, there's like a whole thing about this girl being attacked and apparently then the government blamed it on a bear, which are not all that common in the area, but do happen. It's a fake story though, so it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't know for sure that it was that fake. That wasn't a the- real but- government action, so there's nothing to criticise there. But Bear attacks are usually made public. Like, not the names of the people they happen to, but there's usually statistics about bear attacks. And I found one guy that had done, like, significant research into bear attacks in the area, and this doesn't appear to have happened. So... Even if it did, say you are in a forest in America, and one of the many predators that exist in that forest, whether it's a mountain lion, a bear, wolf, whatever, attacks you out of the night, that is going to be horrific. Yeah. You, that is that is going to be a monster attacking you in your mind. It's very, very dark in this abandoned town, let me tell yeah, you that. You don't need a Wendigo <laughs> because a mountain lion is scary enough, thank you very much. You don't need, need to make it beyond that point. About this documentary as well, I will say that they went as far as to hire an actor who pretended to be a professor at a local university teaching folklore and mythology who claimed his talk about Helltown, was, he taught that in his class. But the teacher wasn't, a, he doesn't exist and there is no such course. No, yeah. So it's like, you can see why people are thinking, huh, like there's a professor telling me this now, but he's an actor. It's bizarre. It is very bizarre. And, and we know that my tolerance for bullshit is quite high. I will listen to people 
talk rubbish because I find it interesting. I don't have to believe it to find it interesting. That's why I love ancient aliens. And it took me five minutes to go, <laughs> no, and turn it off. And when I find out for myself what actually happened in this town, because I knew that this was rubbish. About that, though, the ancient aliens thing... Ancient aliens, when they say this is, what's his name, Giorgio. It is Giorgio. He's a, he's exactly. a, it's, it, it was whatever, another level whatever of, he is, you know, professor of aliens. I know that's not his title, but I believe that that's his title. It would have been bullshit even if they hadn't made anything up, but making stuff up on top of it made it, for me, so non-credible. It's unreal. I mean, I, I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility that the government wanted to evacuate a town to protect people from some sort of evil being in the area that either they couldn't explain or had accidentally made. Well, but I also feel like they probably didn't contain it and we would have found some sort of evidence of that by now. You know, this was getting on for 50 years ago. There is a lot of caves under the town. So there's caves under everywhere. I'm just saying. But that's about all they could find. Again, I feel like a government facility would have been found by now or at least like, you know, empty rooms. Yeah, I, th- I think the, the weirdness of it all... In, 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 in like the weird stuff that actually happened just lends itself to the weird stuff that people have made up. Because why would the government act this way if there wasn't something shady going on? Well, you talk of a chemical but, spill. Yeah, but let, let's just say this about the government and, and governments all over the world. They fuck shit up all the time. <laughs> yeah. We had a, sh- uh, a part of our shopping uh, centre in the town torn down to make way for this new building. And they tore all these shops down, all these buildings down, and the company that was supposed to be renovated went, nah, I don't want to do it anymore. So now we've just got a vacant lot. Like, governments do stuff, like, rashly and fuck it up. So they yeah. may, it may just be that they wanted a national park and they just fucked it up. But you, you mentioned uh, chemical spills. Yeah. And apparently, before the government showed up, there had been rumours of a sulfuric smell. And in 1985, the park services actually gained control of a local dumping site. And when rangers started work there, you know, to again, they're still sort of trying to overtake this town, make some sort of work on this park, uh, which, by the way, didn't really open until 2016, so did well. But they started, all the rangers that were working, they started getting like rashes and getting quite unwell. And it turns out that this dump had been illegally dumping toxic chemicals there for quite some time. Now, the yeah, reason... Notice, notice that they got rashes... And all these other things, but they didn't turn into a Wendigo. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> um, but the reason that work didn't sort of complete and it wasn't like reopened as a park or, well, some of it's still not open, I'll come to that, was because it took that long to understand the impact that this chemical spill might have had. And apparently they still don't fully know if they've kind of like got it all, as it were. But if they had reached animals, well, I don't know what, I couldn't also really find out what these kind of toxins were, all the normal stuff, I guess, but... If they had reached animals, I could understand that there might be like some sort of mutant animal running around, but not still not necessarily a giant python or a mutant. I don't think it would be a mutant. Probably be dead. I think I think chemicals. I think, dead I think again, animals. like Hollywood and The Simpsons have taught us: if you touch chemical waste, you mutate, you become a superhero <laughs> or three-eyed fish. That's just not the way it works. There know, are things. They didn't. There are things that like things that like mess with your genes. Usually, do things like introduce cancer. And things like that. They're yeah. not, they mutate your genes in a different way. Like mutate sounds like you turn, like mutating of a gene happens all the time inside your body. But you use the word mutate and everyone thinks you've got wings and claws. And so it might be that this stuff posed a hazard to humans. Like the government has been naughty and disposing their shit there when they shouldn't have. And they're like, actually, this is leaking out. We better uh, get them out of here before they, they die. It could be some sort of cover-up. I know they didn't technically acquire this dump until 1985, but maybe that was just the only way they could admit what had happened. Be like, it wasn't us. We've now got it. I don't know. I mean, because We've had like, lots of cases of nuclear meltdown. Well, not lots, but a handful. Enough. Too many. Yeah. Where are the mutants in Chernobyl? Where are the mutants in Hiroshima? Hiroshima, sorry. Where are the... Yeah, that's where true. Where are these mutants in stayed. places where we know mm. that have had heavy nuclear activity there aren't there there's no basis there's no science behind this whatsoever so yeah I just think if if there some company ha- companies do cut corners and dump waste but that harms people's health it doesn't change them into a Wendigo I mean let's be clear it's not just the Wendigo it's just that that well, you know what I mean like, it doesn't it doesn't alter you that way it's really bad for your health and can have a really fucked up effect on you but it's not going to turn you into some Three-eyed, 
monster. I mean, it could though. No, it could. Just being like devil's advocate here. Like, no, it's it could. Possible that something what, under what science happened. Under yeah, what science? Science that they've not told us about because they want us to know they accidentally made a Wendigo. No, or, or other beast. No, no, you can't just say it's possible because <laughs> you want it to be. All right. Well, if it's possible, tell me how. If, and then if you can't, I don't know. I don't even know how it's possible to like genetically make a human. I'm not going to be able to tell you how to genetically make a Wendigo. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that someone can't. If you understand science and can explain to us how you might be able to make a Wendigo, please get in touch. You can't. <laughs> it's, it's not how it works. That's how Hollywood works. It's not how the real world works. You can't do it. Okay, but they could have made like some sort of like mega human. And to what benefit? Like what an accident? Why would they be? Why would they? The government be messing with like super what? soldiers. If they were going to do super soldiers, they wouldn't combine them with an animal. I don't know. They take because we've but like what trait from an animal would we want? Uh, Bear in mind, we're the top of the food chain. Speed. We can we can we uh, we can we can emulate speed. Strength. We can emulate strength. Growling. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I we, don't have, know. <laughs> we have conquered the natural world. We are stronger, better, faster than all of the animals on there. Well, I think a lion would like to have a word. Well, He's yeah. going to get you. Well, yeah, but we can make exoskeletons. We can make cars. We can make guns. <laughs> we do make our soldiers super because we're not fighting with our claws. We give them guns and armour. Okay. It would be completely... A waste of time to try and make super soldiers. Especially well, because that implies that the government gives a fuck what happens to its soldiers. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't. It will just use as many as it wants. It doesn't care about having a, an undefeatable force because <laughs> it's got numbers. All right. Well, let's put a pin in what the government may or may not have been doing because there's quite a lot of things that are apparently now or have been inhabiting or affecting this area over the years in the time that it stood vacant and there are bits of it that are still vacant. So one of the ones that I found was like a bit easier to understand was serial killers and crimes. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, if you're looking for a hideout, a deserted town's fucking perfect. Yes and no, right? Because there was talk of serial killers using the area. Now to hide bodies, okay, fine, because you, you, you go into an area where there's like not many people, although there was quite, and still is quite a heavy police presence. So I don't know how easy that really is. I don't know about living there or communicating with other serial killers, uh, which are all things that have been suggested. And also, apparently, it's a bit of a weird one because areas like this can attract crime, but there wasn't really anyone there. So, what were the victim? Who were the who was the victim? Oh, I think it's more likely not- to just have people that like needed somewhere to live, a bit of shelter, and had like travelled there. To- Isn't that, that being said, it's a long way to travel. Crime does it consists of vandalism. Looting. There's lots of crime you could commit there without there needing to be a populace. Well, it combines with the fact that supposedly multiple people went missing there, and this comes up a lot, but this was difficult to confirm. As far as I can make out, no one was registered as having gone missing there. I mean, a large However, wooded area, people going missing, I'm not that yeah, surprised about. That was going to be my next point, because it is now part of Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And being a park, accidents happen, people go missing. So anything that's now registered within that area is more likely to just be like a normal level of crime for a national park rather than related yeah, to that national, so All national parks are a great place to dump a body if you can get in there without being seen. We did temporarily lose track of some people, as I understand it, when they were forced from their homes. But I think that's to be expected because you're like, get out and you've got to go and find somewhere new to Yeah, live. and let's not forget, they made a fudge up of this. So yeah. <laughs> it was a logistical nightmare. But as far as I can make out, no one actually went missing in the sense that they were like killed, murdered, taken or anything like that. No. I can see why squatters may have became an issue. <laughs> That's about as far as I can go Yeah, with that. like squatters, like vagrants, teenagers. I bet some teenagers that are into the devil would love an abandoned town. Oh, well, it's funny you mentioned the devil because satanic cults became quite a thing. Uh, it gets linked a lot to a church which was abandoned and has upside down crosses on it. Now, that, again, I believe was in the documentary. I haven't actually watched it. I've only seen clips from that documentary. I tried to focus more on fact rather than what was actually incorrect. However, it comes up a lot. Everyone's like, there's this church and it's been abandoned. No, no, okay. The church was actually the Mother of Sorrows Church, which is in a neighbouring town of Peninsula and is still standing and is actually a Catholic church. I don't fully understand why they have an upside-down cross, but it's not a satanic thing. No, 
No. I guess you can ask them if you really want to. Uh, but there was a church in Boston that was abandoned and it's still there today, but now it's just like a little white coloured building. There's a sign that suggests it's still a church, but I don't know if it's like operating. I couldn't find it. There wasn't like a website for it or anything like that. So, but it's not, it doesn't look abandoned anymore. It's been like repaired and put back together. It's just a nice little brick white building now, but it was never satanic. I'm surprised you haven't mentioned aliens yet. Do you know what? They don't really come up. That's surprising because I would have thought that having an alien base would be the perfect reason to evacuate a town. I mean, you could put that forward as a theory. <laughs> I don't want to put any forward any theories to do with this because I, I think this is a massive misunderstanding. Apparently there's a lot of talk of seeing people dressed all in black and chanting or in hooded robes. Or, or, or hoodies, like teenagers. Well, I also think as well, like you, you always mock ghost adventurers for dressing in like black combat gear, but I bet like they're not alone. I bet people like, because when I go, I'm 100% going to be in like black combat gear. <laughs> mostly to wind you up. But I wonder if they're just like people investigating the area because there is a lot of that. I watched a lot of videos of people that were walking around the town. Oh, so, yeah. And like there are going to be teenagers that go there and party and there are going to be, there might be some that are interested in the occult and play around with that kind of thing. They found like flattened down areas around some old graves and uh, there was some like burned bits and they thought that that was signs of a ritual. Yeah, so, but these are all like, non exit like things that teenagers have made up that like they're just playing with stuff. There's been no evidence of any actual like Satanism. Well, there's a road that's referred to as the end of the world road. It's actually called Stanford Road, uh, which is creepy because it sort of stops and drops off into the wood. And there was this rumour that a demonic cult would force you off the road there and fall off into the woods. There's a lot of like this whole folklore spooky stuff going on around this town. But honestly, I've had a look on, I've spent some time on Google Maps touring this town. I've watched a lot of videos looking at this town. And like, it's just like a gravel path at the end. There is a house on Google Maps with a guy out on his drive in like bright shorts, which kind of ruins the spooky mood. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I'm struggling here to find anything really kind of creepy. And I love a bit of spook. No, me too. I, I, but I, I do see how this set of circumstances have led to all these stories because it is the perfect setup. Yeah. It is, like you said, there's literally not one case of someone actually reporting these things happening, just people saying that they happened. There's a story, yeah. but there's not the news story to back it up. There's not the there's not the statistics of missing people to back up their claims. Mm. So they're taking a spooky circumstance. Well, you've got two things. You've got the government side of things where the government acted weirdly, which that breeds superstition and conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Yeah. And then you've got the spooky side of things, which does also create those sort of thought naturally. So it's, it's almost like the perfect combination. The, the government's action led to the abandoning of the town and the abandoning of the, the abandoned town is spooky. So it's all like, why did the government do it? Was it ghosts? I do feel like it's like overly spooky because it's got, there's a lot of like specific things that are said to have happened in this town. I don't know though. There is a lot of buildings left. So they've re redone like a lot of the sort of like the local store and there's like a little gas station and there's a visitor centre now. But off the kind of main path, there's still a lot of roads that are blocked off and marked as closed and you can walk down them and you can see a lot of the abandoned buildings. Now, naturally, they're creepy as. Mm -hmm. And one of them, there's a noose that hangs in the rafters that supposedly was a slaughterhouse. Well, someone's just put it there. It's, it's frightening but only as much as any other abandoned building is. And there probably is some really bad like vibes in this place because of what happened. So I could believe that it was haunted. Let me tell you this. I don't know how the two go together, though. I'm not, I'm not sure they do. If the government had em emptied this town because there was something going on like an animal, an uh, um, uh, 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 animal crossbred bred with a human or some sort of mutant or a wendigo or whatever, years later they wouldn't allow a... A, a, a visitor's centre to be built. They are very funny about people filming and they have like a lot of patrolling the area. That's probably because they're in a, like, a lot of these roads will be shut because they're dangerous. Yeah, they but don't want this to be a thing. They don't want Helltown to be a thing. A lot of the buildings are dangerous. They don't want people running around there and the government just don't want you mucking around in what is essentially their property and is dangerous because if you get hurt on that property, they're going to be the ones liable for it. I'm going to do you a quick roundup of four or five things that supposedly happened in this town before we make our decisions on whether or not we would live there and what goes on there now and, and ultimately what we think the government were doing. 
Um, there's a bridge that's referred to as Crybaby Bridge because urban legends suggest a kid was thrown over the bridge and you can hear it crying. There are numerous talks of ghosts, including a ghost house that appears about this old abandoned house that appears dimly lit in the foggy distance. And when you get closer, it fades away. If you make it into the house and through the door before it fades away, you're gone forever. There was allegedly a bus crash in which 20 kids died. Again, can't actually find any evidence of this. And there was reports that the bus was still there. Apparently that there was a bus and a homeless family were living in it for a while while they were waiting on their new home to be ready. So that's possible. But people are saying that the old ghost bus man driver is often there smoking, waiting for his bus. And supposedly there was a morgue, which again, I couldn't confirm, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, ultimately... People die everywhere. There would have at the very least been like a doctor's office where bodies were kept. And apparently there's always like this dimly lit red candlelight that when you get closer, it fades away. A lot of fading away. There is a, that sounds like, a that lot sound, of fading away. Sounds like they're, they're two stories that have kind of like diverged oh. at one point from one similar story. Sorry, I forgot one about the cemetery, which um, up until 2011, you could actually just walk into and see, but they've locked it up. It's got that bad. Uh, and supposedly you can see a ghost who sits on a bench and when you sit down next to him, he disappears. However, there is no bench. So that's interesting. But what I found more interesting is the trees move around by themselves. Supposedly this relates to satanic cults in the area because it helps the cult protect themselves. Um, the wind. So that's a very quick, like, no, no, I don't mean like they're swaying in the wind. I mean, the whole tree is like on the left and then it's like over there on the right. Uh, no, there's no fucking ants <laughs> in the woods walking about like, I am a tree. Fuck off. <laughs> so that's a very quick summary of like all the ghostly stuff that's going on. I could honestly give you probably another 10. Uh, I'm not going to, but, and I will, there is a more detailed blog that I'm, I'm working sure, on. I assume there's absolutely no corroborating evidence for any of this. The thing is, this is not even close. Not even for, not even like what ghost people call evidence. These are just so, stories. I've watched quite a lot of videos of people in the area. Obviously, we weren't able to get out there and do our own ghost investigation. But I've watched quite a lot of other people do them. And the only one I found that even came close was a team who had like a spirit box. It wasn't really a spirit box. It was this new bit of equipment that like tells you words sort of thing. Oh, it just like displays thing, yeah. the words. And it said something like satanic cow and ghost, I think was the last word. So we're looking for a satanic cow ghost. <laughs> but I guess like you might sacrifice a cow. I know it's normally a goat. I don't know. I don't know that much about satanic. Why, do, why have they lost their ability to communicate in sentences? Um, I don't know. So and that was the closest they came. The other teams that I had did a good job of the investigation, but didn't really come up with anything, which I actually like because, and I know you said this before, when you don't find anything, it makes them more believable when they actually do. Yeah, if everywhere you go, you find ghosts, I'm less likely to believe you. But if you go somewhere and go, actually, didn't find anything here, that kind of doesn't ensure ensure your credibility, but it adds to it. If you're willing to go, actually, not a ghost here. I do find this very difficult because... When I do episodes on ghosts, sometimes the ones I really believe in. So a lot of the exorcism ones, I, I do tend to believe there's some truth in. But I still haven't got any real evidence that I can give you. So the fact that I haven't really got any evidence for the ghostly stuff that's going on here is like, well, I never really do. So it's difficult for me on, in that sense. However, given the lack of evidence I've got for literally everything else, I sort of believe that a lot of this just came from A, conspiracy theories relating to what the government was actually doing and that sort of got a bit out of hand and the fact that it was left abandoned until like considerable years later and B that fake documentary <laughs> I looked at a lot of the comments on like YouTube videos and Reddit for this because you often find people that live in the area and I did and a lot of them were saying like they either didn't know about it or they don't remember it I mean they would have remembering it is a bit of a stretch because they would have had to have been like at least 50 years old just to be alive and then, and then they've got to be old enough to actually remember. So I don't necessarily expect them to remember it happening, but you would think a town of this, like, n notoriety, maybe, might come up, even if it's just in local urban legend. Because, like, we live near a, a little supposedly haunted church, abandoned church, don't we? And I remember when we were at school, everyone knew about it. Like, you all knew about this tiny, tiny little church near us that was abandoned. It's this big urban legend. So I found that interesting that no one really knew about it. Are, are we at the point where we're doing conclusions now? I think so. <laughs> uh, so I think there may be some nugget of truth swirling in there, in the, but I think most of it, like what you were saying about you, you're not able to get behind the ghost theory is because it stands on so much bullshit. There's so much other stuff going on that is rubbish and made up or no evidence for that. There's too much absurdity. It's too, it's not, mm. it's not 
specific enough for you to be like, oh, maybe something's happening here. It's just, this is spooky. Let's name some spooky things that might have happened. There's too much. There's yeah. The government, the ghosts, the Wendigo, the mutants. Uh, so yeah, I think it's total bollocks. And my conclusion- You think the spooky stuff is bollocks? I think all of it. Well, ultimately, we know, well, they did get forced out of their homes. Oh, no, okay, so what, yeah. what are your thoughts then on why that was? Do you think they genuinely just wanted to build a park that then took them 50 years to, to build? Yeah. Oh, by the way, not much of a park. No, it's got no slides. It's got nothing really, just some like empty lots for you to look at. No, you, you do realise what a national park is. It isn't somewhere you go play. It's just an area of no, woods. I know. There's also a ski resort, which I'm guessing... Oh, yeah. Well, famously, the, well, the, they, they build ski resorts famously close to places where governments have let out mutants. Well, it looked very empty, but then Google Maps that I was looking at was in 2011 and there was no snow, so... Probably <laughs> don't, don't go to a ski resort when there's no snow, do they? <laughs> Seasonal, innit? No, uh, I think government, yeah, I think the government just did what government, everything in the government takes long. I'm not surprised it took 50 years to make a national park. I'm not surprised they screwed people over. I'm not surprised by any of that. I just think it's normal government business. I don't think there has to be anything underneath for them to act this way. They just do. You could convince me of some alternative government cover-up here, I think. The way that it was handled, yeah, sure, okay, it could just be the government fucking it up. You could convince me, not necessarily of an underground, like, lair, um, because I think, think that's ridiculous having it so close to all those people. But you, you, you could convince me of like an alternative theory relating to the government, but I don't think on this occasion, I've not seen anything to convince me really. It looks like quite a nice place to walk around. I've, seriously, I've spent so many... I've, I've, you can watch someone walk around this town in like 50 minutes. So <laughs> I don't think there's much to go on here. No, I, I, I think uh, it's, whoever made that mockumentary, it, it, it was shameful. It was, but then also kind of impressive that it's been able to get so many people to believe all I mean, this. yeah, ultimately <laughs> as well, the, the responsibility, like like I, I, I sensed the bullshit and went and looked into it myself and said, we need to look into this properly. Yeah. But it's dirty tactics by the filmmaker, but you also, come on people, check your thick, like don't just believe what you see on the TV. Very much so. Um, so I think hopefully we've kind of almost busted that a little bit. There was a lot of people being like, well, obviously this isn't real because no one would name a town Helltown. Let's just be clear. We're not suggesting the place is called Helltown. No one is. It's is definitely Boston. Also, I, I don't agree with that justification. Why? <laughs> we, we, we live 30 miles from nasty. Yeah, and ugly. And uh, like, they, they, <laughs> they would. <We're> like, <laughs> they've recently had to close Black Boy, Little Black Boy Lane in London. <laughs> like, oh, and Cockbush Avenue. You love that. I love a good Cockbush Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the very final thing I want to say is just about Gore Orphanage because this came up on literally every site that I researched this on. Um, Gore Orphanage was actually a fair distance away. It was in Ohio. It was built in the early 1900s, caught fire and caused the death of 172 children. Now that would be creepy as hell and I could easily believe would be haunted. If things are haunted, that that is. And that, that is a- yeah, and that really happened, but it didn't happen in this town. So I just wanted to be clear about that because that is something that comes up a lot. And if you already knew a little bit about this town, you might be thinking, well, why isn't she talking about that? So here you go. <laughs> um, but it, it was another town. And I think it's kind of separating this stuff that, you know, hopefully we've done a bit of that. So would you live there? Yeah. I wouldn't, but only because it just feels like there's not a lot there now. Oh, and so, like, like, no, no. I'm, cur history. I'm currently on a massive kick of the furthest away <laughs> I can get from society, the better. Uh, but... I think you'd be concerned with the amount of people with video cameras trying to figure out if there's ghosts in the area. My biggest concern is, do they get high-speed internet? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that, that, a lot of these, like, would you live there? The uh, only thing I care about is, do I get high-speed internet? And if that's the answer, yes. Like, oh, there's a ghost. Like, fuck it, I've got high-speed internet. So maybe we'd live there, because you would and I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it. But I'd live in the cabin in the woods. Oh, no, no, no. Some of it's still closed off. I wouldn't like to be any, anywhere near any of the abandoned buildings. I'd be frightened all the time. You'd constantly be up in the middle of the night because I'd be at the window with a pair of binoculars, terrified. No, it's, <laughs> honestly, it's like living with a cat. <laughs> to be clear, I'm not looking out of the windows right now at my neighbours. I look at birds. Let's just be clear about that. Or any noise. It's like... Anytime you've seen right. a cat notice something, that's what my wife does about 50 <laughs> times. On a, what's that noise? I what's don't use noise? binoculars to check on the neighbours, but yes, I make a note of noises and shit that happened because I'm a true crime enthusiast. And if the police come knocking on my door and say, did you hear anything at 3am? I want to be able to tell them, yes, I heard this, officer. Yeah, but your first question is always, what's that? Like, I know. <laughs> it's a noise. Get off my back, woman. <laughs> 
Mystery News. Johnny, the smiley face killers are back. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> now, you may or may not recall, if you haven't listened to some of our older episodes in 2021, I think it was, we did an episode on the smiley face killer or allegedly the smiley face killer. It made Johnny very, very angry. Probably one of his angriest episodes yet. And the idea was that a serial killing gang were drowning men and painting like little smiley faces with graffiti nearby to be like, we've done this. But they couldn't decide on a design for the smiley face and were inconsistent in their quality of applying it. So apparently they've never left. We've just, we've just not been had reports on this. In February, there was an article on Newsweek.com about how there's been uh, 11 deaths in Chicago. All men died in 2022, whose bodies were found in the river, the Chicago River and Lake Michigan shoreline, all in their 20s or early 30s, all in areas of nightlife, all fit and healthy and athletic. One of these, was, one of these 11 was deemed a suicide, but the other 10 were deemed undetermined. And basically, when there are no witnesses, they look for evidence of homicide, accident or suicide. If none can be accurately determined, they say undetermined. I love that this is in Chicago and people are like, oh, it must be one person. It's like one of the highest crime well, like rates. A team, in the, a team. One of the highest crime rates in America. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's not like they're being stabbed and thrown into the river or strangled. Like, are we, you know, it goes back to the whole theory. I mean, I guess listen to the episode, you know, if, if you haven't already. Like, it goes back to the idea of but are they, people really they, just again, wandering Did they find in? the smiley faces? Well, I thought you'd ask that. Apparently now, the two retired cops that are championing this say there are 13 distinct symbols, not just a smiley face. Oh, fuck me. (laughs) There's a poop emoji. (laughs) They say they have nearly 700 cases now linked to this and they're struggling to look into them all. What I can only describe... Yeah, because they're retired policemen with no access. (laughs) Well, they say, of course, they're still killing. No one is stopping them. But when Newsweek.com asked the FBI or someone asked the FBI for a comment, uh, they said, and I'm paraphrasing here, this is not exactly what I said, that it's not a thing. Like, they were just like, no. It is weird. I mean, it goes back to what I said at the time. I'm pretty sure I would have said it was weird then. But the fact that they've now created 13 new symbols, I mean, and I couldn't find what they were. Like, tell me, tell me what they are. I need to be looking out for them. I think I said this at the time, that I think these people are looking for meaning in their own lives. 13. I think, yeah, I think bad things are happening and that needs to be looked into, but I don't necessarily think they're all linked. I don't necessarily think they're all murders and I don't, and like, let's not forget that these symbols, like that, they're allowed to be miles away from where they actually find the body, and they go, "Look, the symbol." Maybe that's why they've brought in thirteen now, so that they can be like that's much closer. Yeah, but these are all similar. I bet they're all like the smiley face. They're all things that are popularly spray painted. Yeah, because let's be clear as well, all the smiley faces weren't exactly the same, were they? Not at all. Not even close. They were <laughs> like not even. Just- oh, look how angry you are. <laughs> Because these cops have got this wild theory, and there's, but there's actually real mystery here and a, a real something that needs to be solved, and they're wasting their fucking time on this bullshit. When <laughs> I mean, let us know what you think, I guess. The smiley face killers, are they a thing? It might even be the same guy, but I don't think the symbols have got anything to do with it. It's a gang, Johnny. It's a gang of serial killers. You know what I mean? (laughs) They may be a gang of murderers, but they're not, they're not doing like. I remember, they're like nationwide. This wasn't just contained to Chicago. Oh, oh, I know, I know. Anywhere you see a smiley face. Maybe the fact that this has now been sort of brought into Chicago, maybe he's like tired and can't quite travel as far. Again, I'm guessing here. Maybe it's just that bad things have happened. Let us know what you think. You can find our blog at mysteryoflifepodcast.co.uk and you can follow us on Instagram at the mystery of life pod and we'll be back with you next week. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>